What the scripture says, if you were following it, you're breaking it down, is that they had the old school lie detector test. <laughs> they had the old school lie detector. Used to have on these little talk shows, Maury Povich, Ricky Lake, you know. The new shows are like Ellen DeGeneres and stuff like that. They just promote homosexuality, fornication out in the open. They loving that stuff. They say it's nothing really to expose because we, we're proud of all this stuff. So anybody who's doing this type of ridiculousness will give you an open platform and call you a star. That's the new type of talk show that they got where they just talk about wickedness out in the open with no shame behind it and then promote everybody who's doing it. That's the new talk show. The old talk show used to know that people knew that this stuff was shameful and they would set up little shows to where it's like people would be getting exposed. So a man, I guess, and it's all actors anyway, I found out, everything is fake. A tangled web of deception is the world that we live in, created by Satan and that Babylon temple. But they would have these shows and it would be like a man would suspect or think that his wife was stepping out on him and then he would go to like Maury Povich or Montel Williams or Ricky Lake or Jerry Springer and he would say, I think she's doing something. Then the wife would come in and they would do a lie detector test on her. I guess she would put her finger to the little what's the name graph? It's like a what's the name graph. I don't know what it is. It's an old graph, but it got something else in front of it. She put her finger there and then I guess they measure the amount of I don't know, blood pressure, nervousness and stuff while they ask questions. They ask some standard questions to see where you at. What's your name stuff? Then they try to pop another question out there and see what happens to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the new way. And you could tell I and then the machine will pick it up and they say, oh yeah, so-and-so was lying. She was cheating. And then the audience, oh, people start running around and fighting and stuff. That's how Springer used to do it. You would be like, what happened to, a lot of people always got to fight. But people would jump up and scream. People start running around. Next thing you know, somebody will throw a blow. They get the wrestling. Somebody's clothes get ripped off. That's the entertaining portion of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, acting. Here in the Old Testament, but, you know, people go home and stuff like that. That's that deep faith. <laughs> Still never cognizant of the fact that the wages of sin is death. Still never really actually coming to the intelligence that the Father gives us that the truth of the matter is the wages of sin is death. <coughs> huh. And they ain't gonna go home like, yeah, it's just a show and blah, blah, blah. Not so. With the old lie detector test, it says what we're going to do, we're going to engage in this little process. She's going to sit right here at the door to attend in the meeting where all the holiness is. And if she's got a lie within, we're going to know because <laughs> her uterus and her womb will become severely infected and fall out. Thus, your lie of adultery means you will never bear witness to the truth ever again. It seems we've got so many choices nowadays, left or right, in this rat race of a maze, dark or light. Say, a gray area sort of haze, flee or fight. Depends, which one gives more pay? Oh wait, live or die. But we want women's rights, our lives are so oppressing. Just take away their lives, their cries are so depressing. We'll listen to their lies and try the independent. The limit is the sky, we might just be transcendent. Cast down, we can't believe he meant it. Disaster. How we should be. As virgin as olive oil, anoint my head to prove ourselves as unsoiled by the fools of death, to take us back into your arms unharmed and be kept protected. Numbers 5, 
the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the Israelites to put out of the camp everyone who is leprous or has a discharge and everyone who is unclean through contact with a corpse. You shall put out both male and female, bring them outside the camp. They must not defile their camp where I dwell among them. The Israelites did so, putting them outside the camp as the Lord had spoken to Moses. So the Israelites did. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Israelites. When a man or a woman wrongs each other, breaking faith with the Lord, that person incurs guilt and shall, commit, and shall confess the sin that has been committed. The person shall make full restitution for the wrong, adding one fifth to it, and giving it to the wrong to the one who has wronged. If the injured party has no next of kin to whom restitution may be made for the wrong, the restitution for wrong shall go to the Lord for the priest, in addition to the ram of atonement with which atonement is made for the guilty party. Among all the sacred donations of the Israelites, every gift that they bring to the priest shall be his. The sacred donations of all are their own. Whatever anyone gives to the priest shall be his. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If any man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful to him, if a man has an intercourse with her but is hidden from her husband, so that she is undetected, though she has defiled herself, and there is no witness against her since she has not been caught in the act, if a spirit of jealousy comes on him, and he is jealous of his wife who has defiled herself, or if a spirit of jealousy comes on him, and he is jealous for his wife, though he has not defiled herself. Then the man shall bring his wife to a priest, and he shall bring the offering required for her, one-tenth of an ephah, for barley flour. He shall pour no oil on it, and put no frankincense on it, for it is a grain offering of jealousy, a grain offering for remembrance, bringing iniquity to remembrance. Then the priest shall bring her near, and set her before the Lord. The priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and take some some of the dust that is on the floor of the tabernacle and put it into the water. The priest shall set the woman before the Lord, dishevel, dishevel the woman's hair, and place her in the hands of the grain offering of remembrance, which is the grain offering of jealousy. In his own hand, the priest shall have, a water, shall have the water of bitterness that brings the curse. Then the priest shall make her take an oath, saying, If no man has lain with you, if you have not turned aside to uncleanness while under your husband's authority, be immune to this water of bitterness that brings the curse. But if you have gone astray while under your husband's authority, if you have defiled yourself and some man other than your husband has had intercourse with you, let the priest make the woman take the oath of the curse and say to that woman, The Lord make you an execration and an oath among your people. When the Lord makes you your uterus drop, your womb discharged, now may this water bring the curse into your bowels and make your womb discharge, your uterus drop. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. The priest shall put these curses in writing, and wash them off into the water of bitterness. And he shall make the woman drink the water of bitterness that brings the curse. And the water that brings the curse shall enter her and cause bitter pain. The priest shall take the grain of of offering of jealousy out of the woman's hand and shall elevate the grain offering before the Lord and bring it to the altar and the priest shall take a handful of the grain offering as its memorial portion 
and turn it to, into smoke on the altar. And afterward shall make the woman drink the water. When he has made her drink the water, then if she has defiled herself and has been unfaithful to her husband, the water that brings the curse shall enter into her and cause bitter pain. And the womb shall discharge her uterus drop, and the woman shall become an execration among her people. But if the woman has not defiled herself and is clean, then she shall be immune and be able to conceive children. This is the law in cases of jealousy. When a wife, while under the, her husband's authority, goes astray and defiles herself, or when a spirit of jealousy comes on a man and he is jealous of a wife, and then he shall set the woman before the Lord, and the priest shall apply this entire law to her. The man shall be free from iniquity, but the woman shall bear her iniquity. Thank you. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray for our Father. Numbers 5. Truth. Crush the earth. Shall rise again. Truth. Truth. Crush the earth will rise again. Numbers 5. A lot of different places I really wanted to begin this. Wanted to kind of break it down. I got different places I'm like, where do I start? But let's go ahead and get into it. What you should have heard is a story of a man and woman betrothed, married to one another. And the man, a spirit enters upon him to accuse the wife. He, something is up. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. But he thinks it. And he says, this woman has been unfaithful to me. In some way. It's a real strange thing, but we know that in this relationship that the father has proclaimed that the woman has made out of the man of the rib. Also that the man would leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and that the two would become one flesh such that he is with his wife and he says there's something there. He doesn't know it. He has not perceived it, and yet he feels there's something there. Never happened to me. Not in my marriage. But because we live in an adulterous generation, a fornicating generation, and the people, I've experienced it before in that in, outside of marriage. In the several dozen women that I was married to before your mom, before my wife, the one that I took vows with at the altar, I had a few dozen wives other than her that I never walked down the aisle and put a ring on their finger. Just keep it real. 
an adulterous generation, fornicating. And it will get to a point where a man may have that feeling, but he can't prove it. And you may find yourself in a community and in a society where the women have developed such a spirit of deception and wickedness within and overcome sinful nature to where a woman could go out to intercourse with another man other than her husband and walk away from it and no one ever know. If you really sit there and focus in on that, that's rather extraordinary. That a person would step outside of their relationship of marriage, of oneness, go to intercourse with another person in complete violation of a vow, a promise of a commitment and could do it and then come back and re-engage with the original intercoursing living life as if nothing ever happened. Wow. How far we have fallen when we can be in a society in which a woman could freely engage and walk in there without any guilt and just live. And it takes a weird spirit to enter upon a man like something is not right here. Extraordinary. And then... What the scripture says, if you were following it, you're breaking it down, is that they had the old school lie detector test. <laughs> they had the old school lie detector. Used to have on these little talk shows, Maury Povich, Ricky Lake, you know. The new shows are like Ellen DeGeneres and stuff like that. They just promote homosexuality, fornication out in the open. They loving that stuff. They say it's nothing really to expose because we, we're proud of all this stuff. So anybody who's doing this type of ridiculousness will give you an open platform and call you a star. That's the new type of talk show that they got where they just talk about wickedness out in the open with no shame behind it and then promote everybody who's doing it. That's the new talk show. The old talk show used to know that people knew that this stuff was shameful and they would set up little shows to where it's like people would be getting exposed. So a man, I guess, and it's all actors anyway, I found out. Everything is fake. A tangled web of deception is the world that we live in, created by Satan and that Babylon temple. But they would have these shows and it would be like a man would suspect or think that his wife was stepping out on him. And then he would go to like Maury Povich or Montel Williams or Ricky Lake or Jerry Springer. And he would say, I think she's doing something. Then the wife would come in and they would do a lie detector test on her. I guess she would put her finger into the little what's the name graph It's like a what's the name graph I don't know what it is. It's an old graph, but it got something else in front of it. She put her finger there and then I guess they measure the amount of, I don't know, blood pressure, nervousness and stuff while they ask questions. They ask some standard questions to see where you at. What's your name stuff? Then they try to pop another question out there and see what happens to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the new way. And you could tell I and then the machine will pick it up and they say, oh yeah, so-and-so was lying. She was cheating. And then the audience, oh, people start running around and fighting and stuff. That's how Springer used to do it. You would be like, what happened to, a lot of people always got to fight. But people would jump up and scream. And people start running around. Next thing you know, somebody will throw a blow. They get the wrestling. Somebody's clothes get ripped off. That's the entertaining portion of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, actors. Here in the Old Testament, but, you know, people go home and stuff like that. That's that deep fake. <laughs> Still never cognizant of the fact that 
the wages of sin is death. Still never really actually coming into the intelligence that the Father gives us that the truth of the matter is the wages of sin is death. <laughs> and they ain't going to go home like, yeah, it's just a show and blah, blah, blah. Not so. With the old lie detector test, it says what we're going to do, we're going to engage in this little process. She's going to sit right here at the door to attend in the meeting where all the holiness is. And if she's got a lie within, we're going to know because <laughs> her uterus and her womb will become severely infected and fall out. Thus, your lie of adultery means you will never bear witness to the truth ever again. Did you hear what I said? Oh, I got to link those for you. You're like, what does that got to do with the bearing witness of the truth that our uterus dropped? Because every human being that's here, when the Father made us, He allowed us to take part in a miracle called the creation through which truth comes to earth through his creation the light is called forward from the darkness that that process when the light comes forth from out the womb in obedience to the truth that is the father such that the will of the father spoken truth is manifest on the earth the only one that has his spirit breathed upon him. In him. Made in his image and likeness. The earth will now bear witness to the truth of the father. Because everything that he does. When he's righteous. And he's in worship. Is supposed to glorify our father. Yes or no? So through him, the truth can be had. Because through him, the Father's truth is made manifest and witnessed by everything on this earth. And he said, you lying adulteress, you will never bear truth again, dude. You can't, it can't, you, you won't produce it. So she's got to drink it, the little potion, the hemlock, and then they're going to wait to see what happens, the real lie detector test that has bona fide consequences. You don't get to just go home from Jerry Springer. No, no, no. We're going to see right there on the spot. And I was thinking about this, and the title of the sermon came out as the truth crushed to the earth. And I came, it came to me because it said that you're going to have this holy water and you're going to ask her these questions and she will answer these questions and the man will bring his bread offering and then with the holy water you're going to take up dust from in front of the tabernacle and pop it into the water. Thus completing this elixir that she's going to drink that's going to bear out the truth. And I said, wow. So the dust of the earth carries the truth of death. And so when he said, when you bite this apple, you will surely die. And this one will come to eat you up because to dust you will return, dude. What? We know that he created man to live in righteousness, to come forward out of darkness as the light, 
and to live and to live again and to live. That's what he created, man, in his image and likeness to be able to do. And he says, when you go away from me, the sentence is death. He said, I created you to live. And so long as you do righteousness, my will, call forward in life, that's exactly what you're going to do. But when you don't, you will die. And you will become dust to be eaten by Satan. And the real truth is that this dust itself truly is death. Because all the living things sentenced to death become the dust. Yes or no? And so the truth of death is in the dust. Pops it into the water, gives it a libation, she drink it, and death becomes her womb. The place in her body to bring forward the light, the truth, and the life. No more. I guess she thought that there's no way that anybody can find out. And that's really what we have to ponder in this society, in the culture that they were at. That she could do such an egregious, heinous thing. And I know they're making every fornication okay nowadays. I know they're making every fornication and sexual sin acceptable nowadays. People are in marriages. They say we're patently amorous and all of that. We're an open marriage couple. We both is doing things in fornication, even though we're supposed to be committed to each other. They're making all that acceptable. And what the father is saying is here, you sitting up here living in a society in which that thing, which is literally extraordinary, it's egregious. This thing is literally death itself, really. When the women get to this point, you in big trouble because you won't have truth in that society. You won't have light. You won't have new life coming forward that can bring you hope of righteousness even, dude. You got to understand that concept. Like, <laughs> we have, throughout the Holy Scriptures, they have instances like examples where they would have these societies that we that they depicted as being really tough societies that a lot of um righteousness a lot of good things weren't happening that people were really being oppressed and struggled and we can look at those ex bad examples of how a government and a nation should be run that you got this great amount of slaves that's being pillaged and stuff like that but even in those circumstances the women, they were saying, were still conceiving these children. And when they would conceive the way that Noah was conceived, you see? And when they would conceive the way that Moses was conceived. And when they would conceive the way that the Christ, Yeshua, was conceived. You now can see that even in the worst of the societies, where oppression is run rapid, and it's like, yo, it's really bad here. This is how you know it's really bad. Because in every one of those examples that I named to you, bona fide genocide was happening. Like, that's the stuff that you see on the news. And then, like, there's a genocide occurring in this, what's the name? And then people want to put little black uh, colors up for their little uh, uh, Facebook or Instagram. Or, you know, pray for this or save that. That's the stuff that they were saying, like, in this new conflict with Israel. They were saying, like, wow, they kidnapping the babies and the women. See what they're saying? They know. They're going to tell y'all it's okay to cheat on your husband or to cheat on your wife, to walk outside of your marriage, to have open sex and be ridiculous and stupid. 
They're going to tell you that's okay. But then they'll turn around and tell you, yeah, they're kidnapping the women and the children. It's crazy. <laughs> see, how, see how hypocritical they are? They're going to tell you we can try it all over the family, man. It ain't nothing in family. It ain't nothing in, in children. It ain't nothing in um, mothers and fathers and being together. Because men can get with men and women can get with men. Women can get with women. And we'll depict pictures of that. And we'll everywhere where you look, we'll see a, a little kid on a commercial or, uh, or, or any type of um, illustration that they got nowadays, a propaganda. And you'll see a kid running around and say, oh, he's going home to his parents. He busts through the door and give them both a hug. There's two women there. They're doing stuff like that. To literally tell you there's no value in the family unit. There's no value in what the father decreed as the, as the number one source of this earth for righteousness and righteous living and for salvation. Nations, families, communities, that's where they're coming out of, the womb. There's <laughs> no other way to get that. Y'all got to understand that. And women completely taking every drug. They take drugs for vanity. Like, I'm going to take this here drug right here, and it's going to help me with my complexion. I'm going to take this one right here. It'll help me with my acne. I'm going to rub this one on my skin right here. It's going to help me with skin tone. And then your uterus fall out. So, you know, you felt that you was ugly on the surface. Because Satan told you that. You went to go take care of it. Now you got rid of the ugliness on the surface, but the truth is still, you still got ugliness on you. Because now it's just up inside your womb, festering. So it can fall out one day, you'll find out you're not going to be able to bear no children. I hate to talk like that, but it sounds harsh, but it's only through the truth that we're going to be able to be able to overcome this and heal. What I'm saying to you is these hypocrites will give you one thing and then give it back to you to, to you as another thing and make you honor it and feel grieved over the very thing that you're stepping on every day. He gonna give you something and clown it. And you're gonna clown it with him too. He gonna give you every righteous thing that the Father gave you and disrespect it and say it ain't nothing and you're gonna join in and do it. They'll turn around and tell you, look, they're kidnapping the women and children. And everybody want to post something up. I can't believe it. Hamas is kidnapping women and children. You care about that, that potential there? You do? You who just drank the dust hemlock willingly? This woman here, she drunk it in shame. It's a lot of women. That if they came up and said, you just got to put dust in water and you're done. Man, you be having that old Kermit the Frog as a woman drinking that old dust tea. Easy. Believe me, dude. Morgan Sanks ain't did nothing. She ain't did nothing. Because the women already had in their desire that they want to drink and eat dust. They don't want to represent the truth. And so these hypocrites will tell you, forget about the family. Forget about procreation. Forget about uh, oneness with the man and a uh, woman together to bring forth a new nation to live in righteousness. Man, that's all trash. You know what I'm saying? Don't have no kids. Be married. Have sex. But do family planning and don't have no kids. Wait till you're 45 to try to have a kid. Then you can't have one. We got to do all types of stuff in the lab to get you to have one. You in your 20s, don't get with a man. Get with a woman. Or get with a piece of paper. Anything other than to be able to bring life and truth forward. And the result is that your society will suffer because it's through her. And they know it. That's why Satan ran up on her with the apple. And when the truth comes forward from out the womb, the light come out of the darkness as Moses. Then Pharaoh is going to do a genocide on the babies. Just like the scripture says. And when the truth 
comes forward as Noah. We know Lamech and them going to be running around murdering everything moving. And when the truth comes forward as the Christ, we know that Herod's going to do a massive baby genocide. But somewhere in the scripture it says, to the wicked people who want to stop the truth of the Father from being manifest here on the earth through righteous people who glorify him. Through their thoughts, words, and deeds. Not through running around with a lip and dance and falling on the ground and yelling out to the sky. But through their thought, words, and deeds toward each other. To live righteously. To care about one another, man. So that their soul can live. Not to kiss all over their face. And hug them. Or to put your penis inside their anus. No, to think about what's going to happen to their eternal soul so they can live that type of love. He's saying that that's why I'm putting you men here to do this with one another. That's life. That's truth. That's my commandment. Bringing them forward through the womb. Now what do you got? When the woman herself is drinking the bitter cup willingly, then these people are saying, the wicked ones, if we approach it this way, we don't got to do the genocide no more. <laughs> we won't have to do the genocide. We won't stand accused if she decides just to drink the dust cup on her own. If she decides she wants to be an adulterous, sinful, fornicating, vain woman on her own, we won't never have to do genocide. She going to do it. She going to drink the libation on her own, man. We could just, hey, market that boy. She going to drink it. Because what's on the inside of her is the lie that is death. And she now is embodying it. And this man, something in his spirit lets him know that something inside of her is antagonistic to the way he was created. Ooh. Heard that? Something in his spirit, which was created to live, is saying it's something in her that's antagonistic to that spirit is death. Even though he can't prove it. So let's go to the lie detector. Let's go drink it and see. I'm coming to a close. Our father says that really his nations and his people are like unto him a wife. We already know that, don't we? And that we know that when you get to start to reading through it, he told Moses many times. He told Elijah. He told Hosea. He told Jeremiah. He told Ezekiel. He told Christ. When Christ came and said, you adulterous generation. He told them all. He said, this one, I'm married and she's so unfaithful. These nations are so wicked in front of me, man. They're so unfaithful. And he says that in your lack of faith, you nations will not thrive. And it says that when the children, uh, the Hebrew Israelites, were inside of Egypt. Egypt was thriving before and everything was doing well. But it said that Egypt, though it was thriving, it had these Israelites in it. And that the father, this is Egypt going astray, you know, an unfaithful wife. It says that even though the Israelites were having babies left and right, the Egyptian women could not conceive. 
couldn't do it, man. You see that? You will not bring forward the truth, dude. You're not going to do it. You unfaithful to me, you won't do it. And you can see there are nations even now and even all across the world, the UK, even in America, you see that there are people in those nations and those nations in general, those birth rates are in the tank. Of course, you got the wicked people talking, sending out propaganda saying that the world is overpopulated. All you got to do is go any place that you want to outside of your little inner city hole that you're in, just go 15 miles. I mean, even if you're in New York or even if you're in Detroit, like you don't got to come all the way into Africa or the Philippines or go all into South America or nothing like that. You ain't got to go to Australia, to the outback. You ain't got to go none of them places. Go 20 minutes outside of where you live and see how much land is out there uninhabited. See what I'm talking about? They can just go right outside of Detroit. In between Detroit and the next big Babylon. That's where I live. I go from Detroit to Lansing. And all in between there, I ain't see nothing but open grassy fields. Cows and little animals. Little deer running up out of there. Good, get out of here, man. Because Satan never wants the truth. Father said, this is a creation that will glorify me. He said, no, it won't. This is a creation that's going to live forever and do righteousness. Satan said, no, it won't. I hate you. I hate them. And I hate everything that y'all are supposed to be together. And all I'm going to do is to make sure that that can never happen. And the father said, you're going to eat dust, dog. That's all you're going to do. See, they used to, we, we was in the hood. We was literally used to try to tell you what to do. And he would say, you can't tell me what to do. All I, all I have to do, because he would say, you better do this. They said, all I have to do is stay black and die. They would say stuff like that. See the type of curses that they bring on themselves? But they said they in denial or not having, not, not having listened to what you say. Satan come talking to the father, talking about what? Not going to happen. father said, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. And when the father say what you're going to do, that's definitely what you're going to do. When the father look at you and say, you know, they'll say black and die. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what you got to do. You wicked one who won't receive righteousness, stay black and die is exactly what you're going to do. And half of y'all, you're going to stay white and die. You will stay red and die. All of y'all will die. Now what? When the father speaks, it's what it is. So when he said, you're going to eat dust, and you guys think that Satan got something on the father, and Satan popped in them chops and got thrown from heaven like a dog on lightning bolt and kicked out of there never to see the face of the father again, he said, you got too happy running your mouth about what, was, what wasn't going to happen and this and that. You out of here, and now I'm going to tell you what is going to happen. You're going to eat dust. And you know what Satan did? He didn't do what like y'all, continue rebellious and stupid like that. You know what he said? Well, if the father commanded, I'm going to eat dust, then let me go ahead and make this dust. Big old fat plates of dust, man, because I'm going to go get me some dust, because if I got what I got to eat, then let's do it. He said, I'm not going to eat dust. I'm going to eat something else. No, he know. He eating dust. And so guess what? He needs to prepare you folks, the ones that's going to stay black and all every other color and die, guess what? He ready to eat. Molek. Big old fat heaping piles of gourmet death. See the father saying that this thing that I'm talking about here is the real truth that I want people to understand. That here in Numbers 5, that the woman will not bring forth, I will not bless her to represent the truth, to bring forward, to think that she can conceive or bring any forward that is truth when she has accepted death as her God. That is unrighteousness. That is sin. That is lies. 
That is for fornication. When she has accepted death as her soulmate, when she's accepted that as her husband, I won't allow it. And so if it's a nation, a nation that's unfaithful to me, you're going to see immediately I'm going to affect it so it won't thrive. And all these nations think they can thrive because, oh, we're trading a bunch of kumquats and piccadillies and yams. Yeah. And so our GDP is real high. The father just sitting there like, okay, we're going to see. Because your birth rate is trash. And you ain't got a single one coming up in the next generation that can bring forward the truth. So we're going to see how long that's going to last. The father said, and he said to the microcosm of the family, that when this woman is sinful, when she's doing all this wickedness and she's embraced death as her thing, you're going to see. Your family not going to thrive. Your family not going to thrive. And then there's a certain little twist. Okay. The father knows what we're up to. And so when he sit, sit these nations down, he already know what the deal is. Go ahead and drink it. You're done. You're not going to bear forth truth anymore. And in these ancient nations, he could still bring forward Moses and all of that. But imagine a state where he said, no, nah, it's not going to happen at all. Like your stuff is Sodom and Gomorrah, dude. You're not Nineveh. You're not Egypt. None. Your stuff is Sodom and Gomorrah. You're done, dog. You have put forth the abomination that makes desolate, dude. Notice here in this chapter, it talks about intercourse. And I've been explaining to you guys about intercourse, and I said there is an intercourse that is described that Sodom is guilty of because they had the thought that they wanted to rape and violate a righteous, immortal being that is one of the angels of God. The thought. Did they do it? No. But the thought of it will bring forth your complete judgment and annihilation. The abomination that makes desolate. That you would literally rape a righteous, pure angel of the Father, a spiritual being. You would have a desire to do that. And I told you that people are doing drugs. And there's the, that whole religion that comes out of Babylon. <coughs> That now people are calling themselves Orishas. And they're practicing this Satanism and paganism. You got the Catholic Church doing it. It's all one religion that goes back to one other religion. We have one that's monotheism. That's what we practice. That's what most people who are watching this and tune into this, that's what they're trying to practice. Monotheism under the one true and living God who created everything that we see and he's all powerful. There are fallen angels that popped out of there, got thrown out like a lightning bolt. That's what the scripture says. They're headed by the one that we know as Satan, the Lucifer. He has an alternate religion that's the exact opposite, even though it presents itself right alongside. And it looks like it's similar to those who don't know the truth. And he has it here on this earth. And it's, it's, it's been around since the very beginning when, he, when all of these things transpired. And they gave this worship to men. And it's persisted all this long time. So you only have two religions. I know on earth they say the earth now has, there's now 78 recognized religions. There's just two. Monotheism, that is you with the father, and paganism. You worship multiple gods, fallen angels, wicked figures, headed by Satan. That's the only other one. Some real crazy stuff, but that's what it is. And you see it manifesting itself on this earth now. Two. It's coming to a head. You got two of these religions that you could go into. And people think that they're going into 
Catholicism. And then you look at it, and they're doing the same old pagan ball worship. They have all the figurines and everything that's within it. And they think they're going into this or that. And they're worshiping all different types of icons and multiple gods. Not just the Catholics, pretty much everybody. Father says it's all unfaithful stuff. The father is seeing our unfaithfulness, and in a situation like a Sodom and Gomorrah, like I told you, and he brings them into full judgment. It's because they've done this wicked ancient religion all the way to its hilt. And the wicked ancient religion that is headed by Satan and the fallen angels, we're seeing it manifest very seriously on the earth now because it has in it homosexuality, fornication, all types of wickedness, and drugs. And through all of these different things, the person is hoping, and if you look into these religions, it'll be there. They're hoping that they will intercourse with spirit demons. They want the spirits to enter them and stuff like that, and they can do that experience through their different rituals that they do that sometimes involve drugs and stuff. And so there's a desire that they will be able to interact with the dead, with spirits, and that those spirits would inhabit them, would enter them, and would intercourse with them. And here in the Bible, it says that there was a time in which those angels had fallen to the earth, those wicked angels, and they started to go with who? The women. And they went with the women, and that they had children called Nephilim, but that they showed the women and people all these ways, creative ways to do, make weapons and stuff, and make mirrors and stuff in the earth. Talk about that. And that at that time, they was conceived these Nephilim, giants. And that they said at that time, the earth was completely wicked and the father wanted to do the flood. It's talking to you about this ancient religion and what it brings about. And so they're still practicing it to this day. And now they've gotten people to the point of being very proud of homosexuality, um, changing their sex, which a lot in these religions, they at the top, they at those top gods, they talk to you about this one is male and female and stuff like that. It's all a part of undoing, trying to work contrary to what the Father has decreed from the beginning. You understand? Basic truths. You understand what I'm talking about? The Father declared from the beginning basic truths. That this one is light. This is dark. The light comes out of the dark. Basic truths. And they want to get man, our, our Father's creation, us, who lives forever, to deny all the Basic truths, that is, live completely contrary to what the Father has said to determine, to, for them to be able to bring their goals, which I told you what his goal is. It's Satan. So he wants a man to say out of his mouth, no, light is not light, it's darkness. And darkness is not darkness, it's light. And what are they saying? See? So they say Lucifer is the son of the morning. He's light. They say that now. And they say, that's Illuminati. You can become enlightened. But they worship Lucifer. How? Then is darkness now light? You're referring to it. You see that? Oh, that a man and a woman should be together. No, no, no. A man and a man or a woman and a woman. Basic truths that go back to the beginning. You understand? They want to get us to deny even those basic truths in that religion. I told you when it comes to an end in Sodom and Gomorrah, a real judgment, there's something called this abomination of desolation. And there's a thought that occurs. There's a thought that occurs that says, I like to intercourse with spirits. Okay? We know that people are already at that point. Because they have this religion and people are doing these types of drugs and stuff and they're inviting spirits into them. I mean, it's literally, people are just saying that on the open now. I'm talking with this spirit, I'm doing with this spirit, and this spirit is entering me, and I love as many spirits as possible to come to me. That's the one that Beyonce is saying that she's practicing. That's that Yoruba one that they got the Orishas and stuff. They're saying that their thing is to make as many spirits inhabit them as possible. That's intercourse with demons. It says here, when you have that woman that wants to intercourse outside of the one who has authority over her, you got a woman, her desire is to intercourse with something, someone other than the one who has the authority over her, her husband. This unfaithful one. 
So do these women. They have a desire, Beyonce, to intercourse with these wicked demons. It says, ultimately, in Sodom and Gomorrah, there's a thought that exists, you guys. You haven't seen it yet, but it's coming. I know because I saw, and I mentioned this before, I saw Tyler Perry make a movie in which he depicted a priest being raped. I'm trying to get you closer and closer to that idea. It says in Sodom and Gomorrah, and I'm closing. It says in Sodom and Gomorrah, right before they were completely destroyed, an angel that went in, and Abraham was wondering whether Lot could be saved and whether other people could be saved. I know now that the father removes who he wants to remove even before that. And that's why he was able to say to Abraham, if we find any righteous ones in there, really at this point of this wickedness, why should any righteous person be found amongst this type of wickedness? Where they running around, literally raping, having homosexual sex, doing pedophilia, doing everything here. To where people not even safe to go there as strangers and take a nap on a park bench for fear they're going to be sexually violated. Why would any innocent, righteous person who's likely nonviolent be caught in a place like that? No. But Abraham, if you think so, when they got there, the angels went in there and they had perceived in some way that these were righteous beings. They weren't normal. And it says those men came to that door and busted that door down because they wanted to force sexual intercourse with those angels. You see that? When your sick, sinful nature takes you to the point where, say, I've already intercourse with everything else on earth. I've seen people hugging trees, y'all, for real. Kissing them. I've seen people who want to have intercourse with animals. I didn't see that. They have intercourse with children and babies. They have intercourse with men and women. They did a big one on like 60 Minutes. They were interviewing a guy who was slave to this type of sin. He said everything until now. He just, he didn't put himself into a type of hell because nothing can satisfy his appetite of wanting to have sex with other things. What do you think would be next for him if somebody presented the idea to him that he could have sex with a... What do you think he'd say? Bring him on. The abomination that makes desolate is the one place in the whole scripture that we see that everything was utterly destroyed. It's because of a thought. And an increasing thought that became a, a thought amongst a majority of the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Wouldn't it be nice to have sex with a pure, chaste, immortal being if we could? Wouldn't that be awesome? They had that thought. And I see that people are starting to creep that thought into this world today in the West. Wouldn't because they go from regular other people all the way down to now children. What do you think they're getting at? Where you as an adult is looking for the youngest little baby to have sexual intercourse with? Just like when Herod was looking for the youngest little baby to kill it? You see that type of immense wickedness? They're looking for the youngest, littlest babies, man. When Barack said, take your three-year-old, it used to be five years old before they could enter into the institution. When Barack said, take your three-year-old and put him into Head Start, he knew what he was doing. We now find out that this man is fully into that lifestyle of wickedness. Homosexuality, fornication. They find the people dead at a former president's house, drowned in the water. What are you doing, man? And he pushed every policy on America for people to accept that. For men to be referred to as women, that you can't get any federal dollars for school if there's a boy that says he wants to be referred to as a she and you won't do it, you won't get no federal money. If this boy can't go into the locker room with the girls and play on the girls volleyball team, you won't get no money. And he, not only can he play on their team, but he needs to be in a locker room and be able to change and wear that, wear, wear, change that uniform and be with them in the locker room. If you tell him he got to go somewhere else, we won't give you no federal money. That's Barack did that. And they're going after the younger and the younger. What did you think that's, that's trending toward? 
the abomination that makes desolate. Only one example in all of the Bible. Not Nineveh, not Egypt, not Babylon. I want y'all to see that because there we say, I say Egypt, I say Babylon, and we hold that up as the pinnacle of wickedness. But Sodom and Gomorrah is the only one that's been com that was completely destroyed in the scripture. Babylon will get completely destroyed later when they finally get to the point of Sodom and Gomorrah and they do the abomination that makes desolate. We found out in Sodom and Gomorrah, it's this thought, this desire that says, I want to intercourse with the pure and innocent. It's wicked. For a while, even when I was younger, man, they would encourage us to say, can you find a girl that's a virgin and trick her? into having sex with you. See how they do? They promoted that. You have to look out there and see how wicked, see how wicked this is. Abomination that makes desolate. And they did that in Sodom and Gomorrah. They went to do it. It's a thought. And in closing, that's what we know. And when the Christ came, he, in the Sermon on the Mount, he told us point blank. He said, he said that you have heard that it was said to those in ancient times, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thank you, Emmanuel. But then he said, but anyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Do you see that? It used to baffle me as to why Christ would go on and on about adultery. I'm like, you know, from the modern day perspective, I'm like, it's just a woman cheating on her husband. Why is adultery? Why is she making adultery up there with like blasphemy and stuff like that? What is it about the adultery? I see focus in on that. It just kind of was, it just, I, I don't know. I couldn't, I, and it didn't make sense to me, really. And now I know. He's saying that your thoughts toward this type of sin against God, which is you swore in front of the Father, and then you swore to this person that you would be with them. And now you become unfaithful. Remember I told you how this religion our father looks at the nations as his wife. If you said you're going to be with me, you're going to become unfaithful. We're going to make that wound fall out because we already know you're not going to. The only thing you're going to bring forth is some wicked Nephilim. We're going to make that wound fall out. You're going to take this death. We're going to make that wound fall out. I got to stop you from conceiving because you're going to bring forth wickedness to this earth. Christ said... I'm against adultery because of that. But here's the thing. I'm against the thought of these lustful intercoursing thoughts that you people have. The thought of it. Because I know that the thought of it is going to try to manifest itself immediately as the actual action. You see? And Christ says the thought of adultery is... The thought of adultery... Even to think it is extraordinary. He wants to head us off there. Because he knows that the ultimate adultery, man. Is the adultery in our relationship with our father. And he knows the thought of these type of lustful, sinful deviations from our father's will was manifest in Sodom. You got that. Where they had the thought that they wanted to intercourse with the righteous beings and the angels to defile them. It's the thought of that. They already was doing homosexuality, so we already know that that's a part of why they were judged. But what 
came to the full judgment was the thought that they said, oh, them is angels in there, immortal, righteous, chaste beings. We're going to rape them. We're going to intercourse with them. And what do you have now? Across all the earth, other than people endeavoring to take drugs, mushrooms, endeavoring to engage in every religion, thinking that they can intercourse with spiritual beings, angels now. You see? The abomination of this what? The abomination that makes desolate. True crust of the earth will rise. And so we know that when she drinks that dust, that that womb is going to become desolate. Who is going to be desolate? Here he is. In this bread, the body that was broken. Said that there's one instance. That this husband had brought her in. And he offered for her. I thought that was weird. Like, man, this husband that's thinking this about his wife, why would he come in and bring the offering to the priest? You see what I'm talking about? I was tripping at that. I was thinking to myself, man, I'm not paying. I'm not bringing nothing. Not me. Is that was me. I'm not doing it, dude. I'm not doing it. By the time I'm thinking that you have been with another man, dude, <laughs> Yeah, uh -uh. We, if we going here, dude, I'm doing what I got to do. You bring your own little cereal. I'm not bringing any cereal for you. I'm not bringing any bread. I'm not bringing no oil. I'm not bringing nothing for you. She has stepped out, and I know it. I mean, I can't prove it, but I know she has. So I don't know. We can put her at this tent of meeting, and somebody else can bring something. That's me. I'm not the Christ. It says that the husband brought her there. Under the suspicion. I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not, not, not another dime. Not on earth. Until we, till we can, till, till I'm done with this suspicion. I'm still suspicious. You get nothing, dude. So this fee that has to be paid to prove your innocence for this lie detector test, that's your fee, dude. Because I'll leave you right here. Because there was one that came. He brought her and even paid the fee. And said, let's see if we can clear her of her innocence such that she will be able to conceive again. You believe that? Right there in the scripture. There's one that will bring her in and he would know he must have known. That's all I'm saying. Because my thing is, if my full inclination is that she had done it, I'm not paying that fee, dog. I can't. She can't get another dime out of me. But this husband said, said I couldn't help but be like, man, that's some type of husband. He must be hoping for the best. I think that's, my, that's, 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 that's why my preaching style, I'm like, I have to always be careful. Because I'm like, I hope I'm not Preaching in a way that hopes for the worst. You see what I'm talking about? Because I want the spirit of Christ. I said, this husband, when he brought her forward, he must have been hoping for the best. That she really was faithful. That she was really not besmirched. Because my thing is, if it's me, I'm over here like, no. Nah. I'm already running there. When they say, well, you got a fee, I'm like, I'm not paying that. Because I'm already hoping for the worst. I'm already like, no, nah, she... Mm -mm. No, I'm not paying that. Why would I pay that? Why would I pay? She needs to pay it. She the one that's out there, I think. There is one that brought her in and said, I pay the fee and everything because I I would like to know, but I believe that she will prevail and conceive. But the truth needs to be had. I don't know. Perhaps people whispering, perhaps her reputation has been sullied a bit. 
He said, well, we want to know the truth and get this over with. That's the way I feel. Our reputation as the church has been completely sullied by people that say that they the church, was in the church, and even people like me. Now you've come into the church of righteousness, but you come from a bunch of wickedness. You see that? That the church as the people of God that he created on this earth to be able to live and worship to him, our reputation is completely sullied and such that any man that would be married to us, you know what that's called. That's called the supper of what? The supper of the wedding. It says, when Christ come back, man, hey, too bad if you're not invited to the supper of the bridegroom and the wedding feast. He's supposed to be getting married back to the church. That's what it says. But the church's reputation having been intermingled with Babylon, man, and all this wickedness, our reputation has been sully to where anybody is coming saying, this is what I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be married this one. Oh, this is my wife. He would have to be thinking like, man, everybody says that she's been out here you see and it says that he would come and he would bring the wife and he would pay the fee in order to see if she in fact would be able to bear conceive what it says that there will be one that could come in marriage to her and say well I'm willing to pay the offering to see if she can conceive again y'all got that wonderfulness that is our father. I couldn't help it when I read it. I said, that's really something for this husband to come and pay that fee for her. And only the Christ could be such Where's a husband going? that could come and put the wife, the church, back <laughs> before the father and say, well, let's see. And the question is that us as the church, as the wife, when we drink it, when we know in our heart that we are sure and that we have every intention to be faithful to our husband and be able to conceive again in righteousness and that is in both our actions and our thoughts in our name of our father the truth only source of truth in the name of the son Joshua the Christ wonderful husband that seeks to prove out his wife's innocence church we need to keep our innocence our hearts and our minds and our thoughts and the body clean but we don't let our husbands down Christ and we will be able to see the man the truth that is the light I even know he's